Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this linear inequality. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, graph this in slope-intercept form. So the important thing um, is to understand what slope-intercept form is, as well as the parts in slope-intercept form, where m represents the slope and b represents our y-intercept. And that's going to be no difference if we're dealing with an equation or an inequality. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write this where our y is isolated so we can identify the slope and the y-intercept. So we look at this and say, all right, so what do I need to do to solve for my y? Well, to solve for my y, um, I need to undo my operation. So I can see my y is being subtracted by 2. So to undo subtracting by 2, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Therefore, I have negative y is less than 2x plus 2. Now I have my y being multiplied by negative 1. So to undo multiplying by negative 1, I'm going to divide by negative 1, where therefore I have y is less than. Now this negative 1 divides into both of them. And remember, whenever I divide a negative 1 on both sides, I have to flip my sign. So therefore, now I have y is greater than a negative 2x minus 2. Now I can identify my slope is equal to negative 2 and my y-intercept is equal to negative 2. Now, it's important, though, to understand that the slope is a ratio um, between the change in the y, uh, y values and x values of two coordinates. So therefore, we want to write our slope as a fraction. So usually, we just write 2 over 1. But it's also important for you to understand that we could also write that as negative 2, or I'm sorry, positive 2 over negative 1. And the y-intercept represents a coordinate point. So it's also helpful to understand that the coordinate point for the y-intercept, x is, e is 0, and y is equal to negative 2. And we do that to help us graph. Because when we're going to graph, we know that the y-intercept is the point where the graph crosses at the y-axis. So I go to my point 0, comma, negative 2, and I plot a nice point. Now my slope, I could use either one of these slopes. They're both going to be points. They're both going to give us points that are going to lie in the line. Since I have this one up first, I'll have uh, negative 2 over 1. And what that tells us is the change in the y-coordinates between any two points is negative 2. That means from this point to get to my next coordinate point, I need to go down two units. And then the change in the x-coordinates would be positive 1. So I'm going to go over one unit. If I did it this way, I'd go up 2 to the left one. And what you can see is all three of these points lie on the same line. Now, before I graph my line, I want to be able to make sure, am I dealing with a line that's going to be a part of my solution or not a part of my solution? And we represent graphs that are not a part of the solution with a dashed line. And you can use test points if you'd like to. But the easiest way to determine if it's a dashed or solid is look at your inequality symbol. And whenever it's less than or greater than, it's going to be dashed. Whenever it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's going to be solid. So therefore, I'm going to have a nice dashed line here. All right. And now what I need to do is, well, so I understand the dashed line, meaning any point that lies on this uh, line is not going to make my inequality true. That means if I plug in one of these points that lie on the line in for my inequality, it's going to be false. But now we want to determine, what about the points that are above or below? Which of those points are going to be true and which ones will be false? So to do that, what we want to do is identify a test point. And the best test point to always use is the origin, 0, 0. Unless your line goes through the origin, then you can't test it. Um, because then you'd be testing the line, not testing points above and below. So to, so to test it, all I simply do is plug in 0 for x and 0 in for y. And what I notice is I have 0 is greater than negative 2. Well, 0 is not greater than negative 2. That means it's false. That means any point that's above this line will be false. And all points below are going to be true. So I shade with these lines to represent those points being true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph a linear inequality. Thanks.